Yes, you guys, welcome back. Transfer news ain't stopping anytime soon. Um, we are really in transfer window season right now. So many stories to discuss, so many stories that have come out today. I'm doing my best to cover all of them for you guys. And right now, I've got four stories to let you know about that came out today. There are updates surrounding Ziek in his future. We're going to learn the latest news surrounding our interest in Kingsley Coleman. There is a Brazilian centre back from Palmeiras that we have made an inquiry over. And of course, you guys, some surprising, crazy links surrounding Lazaro Martinez. So you guys need to stay tuned for that. Learn the latest news. Of course, I've released content already today. Make sure you guys give that a watch, show some love, show some support. If you like today's video, you know what to do with that like button already, you guys. And without wasting any more time, we start with the first story today. You know what, yeah? For the first story, let's discuss the latest one. And that's the news surrounding Kingsley Coleman. Now, if you guys are up to date with what's happening with him at Bayern Munich, you know that right now they have not come to any agreements over a new contract deal. At this point in time, Coleman is earning up to 12 million euros per season. Bayern Munich have only offered him 1 million extra, around 13 million, and he is holding out for a contract around 17 million euros. Now, you might be thinking that is an absolutely crazy amount of money, but consider this, you guys. They signed Leroy Sane last summer. They gave him 18 million, an 18 million per year Euro deal. And when you look at this season, Carmen performed better than him. He had a bigger impact than him. And in football economics here, yeah, when that happens, when players are seeing that, hey, hold on a second, you're paying this guy more when I'm actually doing more for the team. Nah, 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 it can't run like that. And is there any surprise why so many Bayern players have turned towards Pini Zahavi? Now you'd imagine that Bayern Munich just absolutely can't stand the man, especially after he secured a crazy deal for Alaba at Real Madrid. Alaba is earning over 400,000 a week now that he signed for them. Well, for me, it's only fair that Coleman gets the money that he feels he's worth and that he deserves. Now, here's where the news does get interesting now, you guys, because of course, right now, we found out that if Bayern were to sell him this summer, it's going to cost the club around 100 million euros to get the deal done. And at this point in time, there is interest from both us and Man United. Now, the thing with interest, yeah, is that it doesn't really matter unless there's actions behind things. But with interest, you know, you, a club like us, you want to be kept in the loop. You want to know what's happening behind the scenes. Anything can happen. What if, you know, we have issues ourselves or players decide they want to leave? You naturally want to have those backup options in case anything happens. Um, for me, though, this is a crazy amount of money. And it's quite obvious that Bayern Munich are taking full advantage of that. Now, Coleman's deal does end in two years' time in 2023. And for me, when you're asking for 100 million, you're basically saying that you want no club to sign him. And of course, that makes a lot of sense because that will give Bayern Munich more time to try to mend that relationship and find more time to negotiate a new deal. Considering that Man United aren't even going to spend that amount of money to sign Jadon Sancho and we're only spending over 100 million for one man, one man only, and he plays for a team in yellow. I don't see this deal happening whatsoever, but, but who knows what could happen as the window does progress. For me though, it does feel like we're being used solely as like a negotiation tactic, but as I'm saying, let's see what this window brings. That's the first story out of the way. We now move on to the second story and you know, this one was a bit surprising, a bit of a mazza to be honest, but there could be more concrete interest than what actually meets the eye. Now, of course, I'm talking about the news surrounding us being linked with Lautaro Martinez. And let me break it down for you, yeah? Martinez and Akimi, they both share the same Asian in Alejandro Camano. At this point in time, it seems like Martinez and Inter Milan talks are broken down over a new duel. And, you know, what is it with, you know, breakdowns non-stop and these stories coming to light? I mean, it's no surprise really, is it? But, you know, bear with me a second, you guys. Let this uh, story go to the end. And right now, if Martinez was to go, Inter Milan would want around 90 million euros to let him leave. Atletico Madrid, they're showing interest and we're showing interest as well. And what makes this quite interesting is that Matt Law actually confirmed in an article like a few days ago that we were looking at Martinez as a potential backup option, you know, in case anything for Holland or Lukaku turns to mud. So I think right now is the best time to give my thoughts and opinions. Guys, don't get scared. Yes, we're being linked with Martinez. We're going to be linked with many, many players this window. But this is what happens. If God forbids anything happens with Haaland where he decides, okay, I don't want to sign for them anymore. And Lukaku's like, you know what? I'm not going back to you. You screwed me over the first time. 
I'm laughing into Milan and I'm going to remain here. Well, it only makes sense from that point of view that the club would also have other options and targets they're looking at. And for me, the positive news is, is that we are still looking at top players. You know, we're not looking at no Danny Ings or um, I don't know what other players, strikers are there in the market right now who aren't off that level. Nah, but we're not doing that anymore. Reports said prior that if for any reason we couldn't sign Holland this summer and let's say he agreed to signing for us in the next window, we could still potentially go on for a striker with this summer. And if that was the case, I'd imagine that. And again, I'm being hypothetical. You know, I've got my hypothetical hat on. I'd imagine that we go off for someone where he'd be future-proof. Martinez is adept playing off a striker alongside others as well. He's adept playing with his back to goal and dropping deeper. And, you know, consider it like this. Hypothetical one, Martinez, he comes this summer. Holland agrees to come the following window. Well, that could spell the end for some other attacking players in the team. And let's say they're looking at Timo Werner and they're like, okay, for the 21-22 season, we have to see you perform. If you don't do that, of course, we're not going to wait for you. You know, we're going to move you on and get someone else. So in that case, could that be like a Martinez Holden link up? I mean, you know, I'll be honest with you guys, these hypotheticals even do my head in sometimes. But, um, you know, I, I wanted to just get the point across that clubs aren't just looking at one or two options and that's that. You're looking at an array of them. You need to be prepared in case anything happens. And you know, it's a whole potential discussions just to find out little things like, okay, you know, what would he potentially won. How does he even feel about even leaving into Milan one day? Does he like London? Does he like cold weather? You know what I mean? Just those types of things. And even talking about wages as well, it's, it's standard, it happens, and it doesn't imply that a deal is gonna come. But for me, it's another example of where our ambition is right now. It's gonna continue to grow and grow and grow. And right now, you guys, we move on to the third story today. And this one is a pretty interesting story. Now, there's a player called Gustavo Gomez. He plays in Brazil for Palmeiras and he is absolutely a love and adored, you know, a defender who plays in the middle of a back three. You know, he plays in bravery, got like a lion heart. I uh, will put his body on the line. Recently, of course, they lifted the Copa Libertadores. Palmeiras have been, you know, cleaning up shop back in Brazil. And yeah, you guys, you know, absolutely love and adorned big fan base and you know a real leader in that team now he's a power grind international player 28 years old and this support is actually coming out from a power grind paper called the nacional i'm definitely saying that wrong and they're saying that we have made inquiries over his availability now i'm going to give my thoughts and opinions i mean i i basically do that in every single video to be honest and you know does this mean that we're going to sign him I don't think so. I mean, recently he just signed for Palmeiras. He was on loan for AC Milan, so you'd imagine that he has a very high release clause if he were looking to do business. But, um, you know, he deserves a lot of respect for what he's doing back in Brazil. It's the second player that we've been linked with from Palmeiras, with the first one being Gabriel Mimino. You know, I was speaking about the very versatile right sided player that can play in midfield, that can play all along that right side flank. You know, when with these stories, they give you an indication behind the positions we're looking at and some of the thinking behind what the plan's going to be for next season. So this is why stories like this can never be dismissed because look how Menino then became Hakimi. Yeah, he's a cult figure back home. He is a good defender. But me personally, I've been saying this and I'm going to keep saying this. I don't think we need to sign any centre-backs. Tuchel's happy with what we have. I mean, we kept some of the Morris clean sheets throughout Europe. I think we're absolutely fine at the back to be honest and if we use a defender it has to be Mark Gay getting an opportunity this preseason. so right now you guys we end with the final story today and it's another update surrounding Hakim Ziyech and interest AC Milan now today we got further updates on this story and it seems like AC Milan are still trying to do the most to sign all our players and of course they're looking at getting a deal done for Olivier Giroud they're still interested in signing him of course you can't turn down quality and experience like that for absolutely nothing too you know talks suggesting that he could cost around three to five million now after the success of Tamori coming on loan having an incredible important part for that Milan team one of the main reasons why they were able to climb up the table and get that CL spot in the end well AC Milan feel like maybe they've clocked onto a transfer strategy where they can sign high profile players on loan of course incepts Hakim like Ziyech and this is where things do get a bit difficult now for AC Milan because Ziyech is currently earning 7 million euros per season and the highest paid player at AC Milan 
is only earning up to 3 million a season. So there's a massive 4 million difference which Milan aren't going to be covering anytime soon. And as I told you guys in the previous video on Ziyech, don't be surprised to see AC Milan trying to come in to sign him on loan. Now I get why they're going to do that. You know, they have Champions League football, COVID has uh, really affected lots of Italian teams as well. And the fact that Hakan Shahanoglu, I'm definitely destroyed that name. Well, he's destined to be leaving them on a free. Milan like the look of Ziyech. They like his technical flexibility. They like the fact they can play down both wings and through the middle as well. And I know what you're going to say, Nini, isn't he playing in the middle uh, for Thomas Tuchel? I mean, there's always different ways in which you use these guys in the middle. It's not always the same. But, um, you know, with Hakim Ziyech, I'd have to admit that I'd be really upset if he never got another season. Uh, I'm not going to repeat what I always say about the difficulties he has faced this season. I'm not going to hold that against him because this guy is a proper champion. This guy is a top, top player. And I don't think the rest of the fan base has really seen what he's fully about. Now, of course, I discussed the report suggesting that him and Tuchel have fallen out. I know that they haven't been seen eye to eye on certain things. And naturally, that's going to happen because it feels like in Tuchel's system, there's not really a great place for Hakim in the team. Hakim's not going to wait for anyone. He's not going to let his career slow down for anything. If he feels like there won't be a place in the team for him, I wouldn't be surprised if he asked to leave. And I can't help but have this sneaking suspicion that we are replacing one Moroccan to sign another. I think it's a bit of a shame. I think that with Hakim, his skill set and, you know, his chance creation, that is one thing we need. I feel like he could be incredible for a player like maybe Hallen up front or a top striker for next season. And, you know, the return we saw him for him last season does not reflect him whatsoever. This guy gets double digits for everything. And he's very popular with the players as well. I'm, I'm hoping that he gets one more season. I think that's fair. That's what I'm asking for too. We'll give him one more season. And on that note, you guys, that is the end of all the stories that have come out today. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if by the time this video comes out, there's going to be more stories coming out. Maybe there might be a third video or maybe it'll be an early morning one. But I'm going to let you guys know quickly before I go. The Euro is starting tomorrow at 8 p.m. And I want to cover the tournament. I want to do videos on that. I've got two video ideas that I'm working on right now. And, you know, I wanted to ask you guys, would you like to see me cover Euro 2020 content on this channel? Make sure you guys let me know in the comments below. And on that note, I'm in EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.